All right, so pretty much I'm done. Let me give you a bit of a sight into how it looks now. So you can see that I pretty much took out over 90% of the... Forget about sustainability. You want to enrich ecosystems. Every bean is equipped to live a positive energetic balance. Keep it pruned. We are cultivating abundance. Not a problem to cut down trees. The problem is not planting them. What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Agro Forest Academy channel. Today I want to talk to you a bit about managing systems that have grown tense. I really like to talk about the idea of, of tension and release as the means for maintaining productive agroforestry systems. Because you see, as plants grow, they reach a maximum of growth, of, of health, of vigor. And at this point, we need to cause disturbances in order to release all the accumulated resource, because plants naturally accumulate resource by doing photosynthesis. So they get energy from the sun and they're producing resources. So this tends to accumulate in the system until a maximum point when the system get, gets tense. This is usually the moment when plants revert into, into their flowering stage. They stop growing, they stop producing organic matter and they, they focus all their energies into releasing their children. So what we need to do as agroforestry practice practitioners is to identify these moments and cause a disturbance in the system in order to put all that accumulated resource on the soil where it's going to be used by microorganisms. Now, obviously, if you're producing fruit, you're not going to prune your, your fruit trees in the moment that they're flowering because then you're going to lose the fruit. But all the service plants that you don't need them to set fruit unless you want to harvest seeds for multiplying them, these must be pruned in the exact moment when they're going to transition from the vegetative state into the rep reproductive state. And this is very, very easily identified by a reduced growth rate. Usually when you prune a plant and when you prune a system as a whole, What's ha what happens is that the plant takes a while to re-sprout, then it goes into a, a rapid growth moment, and then it reduces the growth rate and it starts to develop into the flowering stage. So we want to identify that, to prune it at the right time, so that we maintain the highest rate of organic matter production, which is food for our soil, which will in turn feed our beloved plant. So in this plot here, and I've showed, I've, I've recorded other videos of, of work in this plot. What we're doing now is we're taking down the corn, the maize that we, we already harvested, and we're weeding the place. We've got lots of prickly pear around, so we're gonna prune those. We're gonna shred the prickly pear to use it as an input. And we're going to prune all the big trees and put lots of organic matter in the soil. So what I want to plant here is basically tomatoes, maybe a bit of maize, probably some cucumber and, and green beans. All right, so once we've cleaned up the place, and by that I mean weeding, you know, working on the, on the on the weeds and on the small bushes and basically stuff that's closest to the ground. Now I'm going to proceed to work on the trees. So first I'm going to start by pruning the biggest trees and I'm going to work all my way down with the smaller ones. We always start pruning on the emergent layer and then we gradually go pruning the lower layers and that's because I need to 
take into account, when I'm pruning the bottom layers, I need to take into account the damage that's going to be caused by the fall of the branches of the emergent layer. So if I mistakenly prune the bottom layer first, the limbs, the, the branches that I leave on my plants might be broken by the pruning of the top layer. So I really need to take that into account. And that's why we start by pruning the emergent layer. So, you know, branches are going to be broken. But then when I prune the bottom layer, I can take into account the branches that are broken. So, you know, I can I can use that knowledge you know, of the missing branches in order to prune my plants. All right, so pretty much I'm done. Let me give you a bit of a sight into how it looks now. So you can see that I pretty much took out over 90% of the tree's canopy. You know, I just left a few branches with leaves. I maintained the architecture and it should be resprouting in about 15 days. So really, you don't need to leave much. And obviously, I know this tree, I know the species, I know the capacity it has to resprout. And this is a thing that you need to know. In agroforestry systems, you need to understand each species very well. I know that this is a very, very strong and hard wood. So although it is damaged in various points, you can see that the wood is is really damaged actually this tree uh shouldn't take long to 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 start losing its strength so i'm actually already conducting uh some of its children in order to substitute it so probably in a couple of years i'm going to be taking this buddy down uh, but although the, the wood is damaged i know it's really strong so i know that it supports me you know i'm up here and the tree is is rocking a bit but i i have complete trust in this wood because I know it. It's really strong, it's really hard, it doesn't break, it doesn't split, so I really don't have to worry about it. And let me give you a bit of a side of the of the landscape as well. Unfortunately you can't see the mountain range because it's too foggy, but you can see the agroforestry all around. Alright guys, so once we you know, we finished cleaning up the place. I pretty much opened a clearing in my system. You can see that, you know, we've got the pruned trees and all the organic matter is well spread out in the system. All the trimmings, all the cuttings, so everything is cut down. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go right ahead and prepare small nests in between these prickly pears. I've got three rows of prickly pears. You can see there's one, two, and a third one right here. Some of the plants have died. I will replant them, but um, what I'm gonna do is in, in the, the, the both rows that are on the edge, so the lateral rows of prickly pear, I'm going to open every one meter a small nest where I'm going to plant tomatoes and popcorn. Right, these are the crops that I want to produce here now. And then I'm going to spread around some cowpeas. I don't need to prepare a nest for the cowpea, but for the tomato and the corn, they're a bit more demanding plants. I'm going to prepare a small nest with a bit of, of wood ashes and a special ingredient which I have recently prepared from the prickly pear. Remember I told you I was going to shred it. You know, I have it here. This is uh, this is my special ingredient that I'm going to put. You know, it's full of water, full of minerals, so I'm going to I'm going to bury it superficially in the nest. That's going to serve to to store water in my nest for my plants and it's going to release nutrients. I can't bury it too deep because that might trigger fermentation processes that are not so interesting for us. And the reason I'm not 
preparing the soil for the cowpeas because the cowpea is a pretty um, damn powerful plant and I've got a pretty decent soil here already because it's been you know a few years that we're working here so you know I've got a pretty well structured soil as you can see so uh, no need to prepare it for the cowpea so let's go right on ahead and I'm going to show you how I'm going to prepare these nests so friends for the purpose of making things simpler I decided to split this video in two so in the first part we covered the preparation of the site with pruning, weeding and covering the soil in the next video which I'm, I'm putting a card on, on top we're gonna see about preparing the nest and planting also I'm putting another card with a short video about some tips on pruning our service plants make sure you check all that out as these are three complimentary videos.